the State Civil Service Commission did this recruitment without any single recourse to the governor. I feel so pained that I will hear that people are unhappy because their names are taken out of payroll and that I took the names out of payroll. In the first instance, the names were not in the payroll known to law. Before I go to the solution, we have to listen to the story and the history. I am governor of Cross River State with your support, with your votes. So it is natural for me to stand with my people at their trying moments. That I understand very well. Before I came into office as governor of Cross River State, they had placed an embargo on employment. There had been no recruitment into the civil service. But when I came in, I created employment. I employed 2,500 teachers. When I came in, I met a situation in Waterboard where the staff there have not been paid for a very long time because they were ad hoc staff. I decided to convert them to permanent staff, made them civil servants, and payrolled them and paid their backlog. Those same civil servants in Waterboard today are the ones that make it impossible for Waterboard to collect water rates. The same people out of human sympathy, not out of need, but I said, if I met people who were in that situation, let me help, because I am also a child of the same circumstance you find yourself. The same situation happened with CRU GIS. We had people who were working, they were not paid for years. When I came in, I converted them to staff and I paid them. Same thing with CRUBC, where I had some people who had complained that they had been ad hoc staff for more than 10 years. I converted them to staff and I paid. There was massive unemployment, hardship and pain. I decided to open the valve and created jobs. In every one of these, there was official memo to me, official approval from me, calculation of the financial implication, and I give my red barrel approval. In the name of God that I serve, I don't know the day that this recruitment was done. Nobody wrote to the governor. I earn an income that is less than the salary of this state. The civil service rule is clear. Before you put somebody on the payroll, the governor has to approve. It's not as if I gave approval for you to be recruited and after recruitment and I can't pay. I kept paying until the salary became too huge. And you know if there's anything I commit myself to, is salary and pension of the people. Because if I like, let me build skyscrapers, build anything. If my citizens are dying, if people are hungry, then I'm not a governor. I know that the records I have kept in commitment to salary and pension, I am sure if you look at the statistics of this country, Cross River State, out of 36 states, when you add local government and state allocation, Cross River is the lowest in the country. But go and check. Cross River is not owing salary. Unless the pension verification that was done, you were not captured. Cross River is not owing pension. If we are governor of the state and you suddenly discover an additional 2,500 staff on your payroll that you did not authorize, that you don't know about, you were not mentioned, nobody consulted you, what will you do as a governor? That's where we are today. And at the end of the day, these people give Ayade a bad name, as if I'm sacking people from work. Me who is recruiting people, you see the impression that I'm taking people out of job. But only God knows that that was totally illegal. That those people are still sitting on those desks. That the Civil Service Commission, I still reappointed some of them, even though I took them out of the commission. But God judges them, because what they did was the most painful thing. Judge the income of the state. Judge what I have done before you make your comment. Put me side by side with the last 10 states that earn the same thing that I earn, even though their own is higher. Take the last 20 states and see if there's any state that compares with what I have accomplished. What is fair is fair. So today we are standing here and I'm saying let's do verification because they are my people. They still have to get something. But you have to have an open heart. If you know you were given an appointment letter, separate yourself to make it easier to the various ministries to which you were allocated to. Our commissioners will sit with each of those ministries and do verification of those letters. When they finish the verification process, 
they will compute the cumulative cost. And I would, as a way of making things easy for me, it is only those I see on ground here today that we will review. When we finish review, you have the relevant papers to the position we are given. Then they will clear you. Then add up all of that list and they will come back to me. I can then officially approve it. Once I approve it, but I will have a commitment and understanding and a voice confirmation, including something written, that there is no discussion on the subject of areas. Because when I finish this, you put that on me, you'll be very unfair to me. Please, I beg of you, if we add it up, the amount becomes impossible. We will meet again and agree on what percentage we will deal. If I look at it, it's something I can handle. I used to tell them, if the state does not have, Ayade himself, Ayade as a family, has the capacity to assist. It is even against that background I'm taking this risk. That if it gets too hard, I always have a way of coming in to assist. And that's why all of you must join hands with me to make sure that we leave Cross River State in the hands of somebody who will take over from me, who will have human conscience, who will have a heart of a human being, not the heart of a politician. Because no politician recruits after election. No politician will do expanded government after election. If you know, I don't have election anymore. I still appointed the people as many as I did in my first term because I wasn't doing it for politics.